Welcome to Vaziani Military Base. We'll be performing a cold start, which means starting from an unpowered aircraft, and then taxiing to the runway and taking off. First, turn on electrical power by pressing right shift L. With the electrical power engaged, you can see that the height comes to the as well as many instruments and components. Switch your gear light between the off, taxi, and landing settings. When taxiing in low light conditions, it's a Next, we'll request startup clearance from the Airbase ATC, Air Traffic Control. 1. Press backslash to open the communications menu. 2. Press F5 to select ATC. 3. Press F1 to select your current airbase at Vaziani. 4. Press F3 to request starting. Once Vaziani has cleared you for startup, press backslash to close the communication menu and press the spacebar to continue. Make sure the throttle is at idle and press right shift home to start both engines. As the engines start, you'll see the engine related dials on the right side of the instrument panel come to life. Each engine startup is finished when it reaches its idle RPM of about 65%, as visible on the tachometers highlighted. Each engine will take about 40 seconds to start. We can continue with the startup checklist while the engines are spooling up. Press the spacebar to proceed. Next, look down at your fuel quantity indicator on the lower right side of the main instrument panel. Check that it's functioning properly by turning the dial to BIT by holding left alt left control B. BIT stands for built-in test. The pointer and top counters should both indicate 6,000 pounds, and the left and right counters should both indicate 600 pounds. Next, if you want to set your bingo fuel index to something different than the default value, now is the time. The bingo fuel index is covered in the next lesson. You can leave it as is for now. Press the spacebar to continue. Look at the highlighted lights on the bottom left of the instrument panel. The green lights reading lows left and right are indicating that your landing gear is down. After you take off, you need to retract your landing gear to fly efficiently. These lights will go out when the gear is retracted. Before you take off, you'll want to lower your flaps. Flaps are movable surfaces on your wing that lower the minimum speed you can fly at, making takeoff and landing easier. They reduce your performance, so you want to use them only for takeoff and landing. The left of the landing gear lights has a blank black area. This is where the flap indicator light is. The word flap will illuminate here in yellow while the flaps are moving between positions, and in green when the flaps are down. Toggle the flaps position to down by pressing F now. Next, look at the highlighted TO trim button and light on the left console. Pressing this button resets pitch roll and yaw trim with a standard takeoff setting. Hold left alt T until the light lights up. If you skip this step, you can still take off. You always have to pull back farther on the stick. Press the space bar when you're ready to proceed. The red light on the top right of the instrument panel indicates that the canopy is currently unlocked. You want to make sure that light is off before you take off. Close the canopy by pressing left control C now. When starting from a cold start, you will need to set your navigation mode to follow waypoints. Do this by pressing 1 once now. Next, we'll request taxi clearance from ATC. Pay attention to the response because it will tell you which runway to taxi to. Press backslash to open the communications menu. You should already be in the Vaziani ATC menu. Press F1 to request taxi to runway. Once you have taxi clearance, press the spacebar to continue. Taxi to runway. ATC told you to take off on runway 13, which means the runway on a heading of 130 degrees, that is, southeast. This same runway will be referred to as runway 31 when using it from the opposite direction since 310 degrees is the opposite direction, 180 degrees around, from 130 degrees. At most airfields, ATC will direct you to take off into the wind, although there is no wind this evening. Press the spacebar to continue.
The highlighted instrument is the Horizontal Situation Indicator, or HSI, which shows a top-down view of your aircraft superimposed on a compass. It's showing that we're currently on a heading of 229 degrees, which is southwest, and you can see that 130 degrees is to your left. To get to runway 13, we'll need to taxi to the right to align with the beginning of the runway, then turn left on the taxiway at the end of the ramp, and then turn left again when we get to the runway to align along the runway at a heading of 130 degrees. There's a map in your briefing. Press left alt B to bring it up. You can find maps of all airports in your kneeboard, which you can access with K and page three with the left and right square brackets. Press the spacebar to continue. To steer the Eagle, we'll use nose gear steering. In normal range, the nose gear will turn 15 degrees left to right. By holding down S, you'll temporarily switch to the maneuvering range, which gives up to 45 degrees left to right steering for tighter turns. Steer using your rudder controls, which are Z to turn left and X to turn right. Press the spacebar to continue. Your ground speed is displayed in the bottom left of your VSD after the letter G. It'll say G0 right now. Taxi speeds are too slow for the airspeed readout on your HUD to be reliable, so you should refer to your ground speed readout instead. Stay under 30 knots while taxiing and slow down to 10 knots when turning. Press the spacebar to continue. Wait. To get rolling, slowly increase the throttles by moving your throttle controller forward or pressing numpad plus until you have forward movement, but do not exceed 75% RPM. Pull your throttle controller back or press numpad minus to decrease your throttle if necessary. Turn right and taxi to the end of the ramp, being careful to avoid other aircraft. If you get going too fast, engage your wheel brakes by pressing W. Taxi to the end of the ramp and then turn left on the taxiway to the runway, but stop right before the end of the taxiway. Use your brakes, W, if you're going too fast. Come to a halt here, right before the runway. Notice the sign to the right was 13 on it. That means you've arrived at runway 13 as intended. You will now need to request takeoff from ATC. If the runway is clear, ATC will clear you for takeoff and also turn on the runway lights for you. Press backslash to bring up the communications menu again, and press F1 to request takeoff. Press the spacebar when you receive clearance. One, request takeoff. Vazi on the ATC has told you climb 300, which means after takeoff, you should continue straight on the runway's heading until you reach an elevation of 300 meters or 1,000 feet. Continue your taxi now. When you get to the runway, align the aircraft down the center line and come to a halt on the 13 runway heading marker. Hold the wheel brakes, W, and slowly advance your engines to 80% RPM. Once your engines are at 80%, release the brakes and push the throttles to mill, not afterburner. As you roll down the runway, keep a line down the middle with very small rudder inputs. When you hit 120 knots, move the stick to one half aft stick. Once the nose comes up, Stabilize a 10 degrees pitch attitude using the pitch ladder on the HUD as a reference. Check that your vertical velocity indicator shows a positive rate of climb and raise the landing gear by pressing G. Then retract the flaps by pressing F. Maintain a pitch attitude of 10 degrees by keeping the aircraft simple, the W, on the HUD on the 10 degree pitch ladder. If you set takeoff trim earlier, the plane will want to pull up by itself. Apply nose down trim by pressing right control semicolon until your pitch is steady with your hand off the stick. When you reach 350 knots, adjust your climb angle so your speed remains at 350 knots. At lower altitudes, you have your best climb rate at this speed. Nicely done. 
You can perform takeoffs either at mill or max after burner throttle, depending on the runway length and how much of a hurry you're in. This concludes this lesson. You can end the lesson now by pressing escape.